Hey there, really appreciate you taking the time to stop by and check out my video. If you're a returning viewer, I thank you for the continued support. And if you're new to the channel, stick around because I think you're really gonna like what I've got in store. This is gonna be a really fun one as it stems directly from many comments I've received here on YouTube as well as places like Instagram through the direct messages. And that's around the idea of what happens when we add a suppressor to a long range precision rifle. I don't know if it stems from Hollywood or video games or just gun shop talk, but there's a ton of different opinions and theories around what happens when I install a suppressor on a long range rifle. I felt like I've got a great platform here, I've got a suppressor, and I've got wide open spaces, so what better way to test out that theory? So what I wanna do in this video is give you a quick close up look at the gear that we'll be shooting here in just a second, and then we'll move down to 100 yards where we'll run unsuppressed, we'll zero the rifle, and then we'll shoot on steel out to say 1,000 or 1,100 yards and gather data, then I'll install the suppressor and we'll run through the exact same course of fire. And then at the end of the video, we'll compare the data that we gathered from the suppressed rifle and how that performed versus the unsuppressed rifle to understand what exactly happens when I install a suppressor on a long range precision rifle. Now, before we move into the gear review, I got to know in the comments, what do you think is going to happen? What have you seen on your rifle as far as performance differences between suppressed and unsuppressed? Have you seen your groups change, velocity, your distance, let me know, I'd love to hear it. Now with that, let's move into a gear review. I'll give you a close up look at the rifle we're gonna shoot. So really excited about the setup we're gonna run in this video. It's one you've seen on the channel previously in my how to shoot 1000 yards video. But the coolest thing to me is that it's a rifle I was able to assemble at home from the components you see here. The heart of this rifle is the pristine action. So Pristine is known for really smooth and easy bolt throw, bolt lift, dual ejectors. There's a lot of really cool features there in this Pristine action. But the coolest thing to me is actually the Savage pre-fit configuration, which means I'm able to swap this rifle up at home as desired with different barrels. So as you see it's set up here, it's got a proof 20 inch carbon fiber barrel in it, one in 10 twist, and it shoots rather well. Really happy with this setup. It's a fairly lightweight barrel, making it very maneuverable, or if you're gonna take it hunting, quite light and easy to carry. So really impressed with this barrel and receiver combo. For a stock, we're running the MDT XRS chassis. Really like this chassis because it's more of a traditional type feel, but it gives you all the benefits of a chassis. So easy to bolt in and install with a torque wrench, gives me the ability up front. I installed the enclosed handguard so that I can run clip on for my night vision and my thermal. Arca rail underneath and the ability to run a weight, which I actually have installed. I like to run a little bit extra weight in a target shooting application because it helps control the rifle. Then as far as a suppressor, we're running a suppressor you've seen many times on the channel. It's my Surefire 762 SOCOM Mini. I've run this can on 300 Blackout, 16 inch 308, 20 inch 308. I've run it on my 6.5 Creedmoors. Very versatile, I've got a ton of rounds through it. Really happy with the can because it knocks down the majority of the blast. That's actually on the Surefire two port brake, which you'll see later in the video. Bipod, this is an AccuTac, love these AccuTacs. Really sturdy bipod, really nice wide footprint, makes it easy to shoot nights, tiny groups. For an optics package, we're running a scope that Rydon sent out to me. This is the Seven Conquer. 3 to 18, very versatile optic. I've got a handful of rounds on this thing now. I'm very happy with it, it's a great performer. It runs the PSR reticle in it, which is a Christmas tree style reticle, which you'll see through the Tacticam in just a little while. But for this video, I'm actually gonna be dialing. So when I make a call, I'm gonna dial that and then just hold windage in the reticle versus holding over like I normally do. Some commenters in previous videos mentioned maybe dialing is a little bit more fair versus holding in the reticle. So we're gonna give it a try. You'll have to let me know in the comments what you think about the differences. For ammo, we're gonna run Federal Gold Medal Match 175 SMK. So in my opinion, this is kind of the standard of match ammunition. Really nice, great performing ammunition out of this rifle. And I feel like it's a solid baseline to use for this style testing. So from here, we're gonna move down to 100 yards. I'm gonna pull this can off. We're gonna shoot an unsuppressed group, make sure we get zeroed. Then I'm gonna move out and shoot steel at about 500 yards, about 800 yards, and 1,000 to 1,100. Then I'll move back down to 100 yards, install the can, 
get zeroed at 100 yards, and I'll show you that process, and then we'll shoot the same targets, 500, 800-ish, and 1,000 to 1,100, and again, compare the data. What I wanna do, though, is use the velocity and the drop from the unsuppressed rifle that we'll start with to shoot with the suppressor so that we can see just how measurable of a difference there is between suppressed and unsuppressed shooting. So if you like the sounds of it, stick around. Let's fire this rifle up. First things first, let's send five rounds of the Federal Gold Medal Match 175 across the chronograph unsuppressed. Now, because the magneto speed might change my point of impact a little bit, I'm just gonna send these five rounds of the paper and then we'll shoot a 100 yard group after this to give you an idea of how the rifle's shooting and where the zero's at. There we go. Beautiful consistency. It looks like five rounds average 2573 with an SD of 2.6 and extreme spread of six feet per second. So great velocity consistency. Let's run five rounds into a group. So really respectable group, four of them all touching. I think that was the third round that flew high, really not sure why. If anything, I think I'm gonna bump that down one tenth, and that'll be our zero that we run out to distance. Before we shoot steel, let's take a close up look at the group we just shot at 100 yards unsuppressed. So as you can see, I've got five rounds here. This was the round that flew high on me. Overall, you're looking at a group that's about one and a quarter inches, 1.25 inches. So very much acceptable for what we're gonna be doing. Before I shoot steel, I am gonna move this down one tenth just to bring that elevation down just a little bit before we push out to steel. So from here, let's move on out and shoot some steel with our unsuppressed rifle. So our first steel target will be a 10 inch plate at 517 yards. My app calls for 3.6 mils of elevation, so I'll go ahead and dial that on. And then there's a decent left to right wind out here. I've done a bit of shooting off camera. I'm gonna start by favoring left, call it 0.6. So here we go. Just over the plate. Wind call look good. Let's come down a tenth. Right edge, a little bit more wind, call it 0.8. Off the left edge. Impact. Impact. One more round right here. It looks like about 0.7 mils at 3.5 is pretty decent. Impact. So I'm going to call that 3.5 mils of elevation and I'm 0.75 wind to the left. From here, let's push out a little bit further. Next up, we've got a two-third Zipsic at 820 yards. My app is calling for 7.9 mils, so I'll go ahead and dial that on. And then I'm going to favor left one mil. I haven't put any rounds on this target off camera, so we'll be watching this together. There is an indicator light out there that should flash when we make an impact. One mil left, 7.9 mils of elevation. Okay, so that went just over the head. So let's come down two tenths. 
that's 7.7. And I'm going to go 0.8 on the wind. Just off that left edge. Need to cut back to probably 0.5 on the wind. Impact. Upper right shoulder. So let's go 0.5 on the wind. Impact. Looks like upper left shoulder. I'm going to come down a tenth. Stay at 0.5. Pack dead center. Impact. So really nice performance out there. Let's send one more. Stay point five left. Impact. I think that was just bottom edge of the plate, but I'm going to call 7.6 our elevation out to 820. Let's push that a little bit further. Next up, we've got a full size Ipsic at 1100 yards, unsuppressed. My app calls for 13.6 mils. I'll go ahead and dial that in. And the wind has really calmed down, so I'm probably just going to favor. Six tenths left, so just off left edge. All right, so that actually went a bit high and right. So I need to be one mil left. I'm going to come down a tenth. One mil left. No call on that one. Let's come down another tenth. I'm going to come back to 0.8. It looked like there was a splash just off the left side. Impact just on the left edge. So 0.6. That actually dropped low. Come back up. Impact. I can't see where that is on the plate. No call. Impact just on that left edge. I'm going to come back to point six. Impact. Impact. So I believe that was five impacts at about 0 0.6, 0 0.7 on the wind. And I'm going to call it 13.5 on the elevation. Now let's swap over and run through it suppressed. I've installed my suppressor, so now let's run five rounds across the chronograph to see what the velocity is doing. This is from the exact same box of ammo that we fired earlier, unsuppressed. All right, so that's five rounds down. The average is 25.83 with an SD of 9.4. So average sped up just a little bit 
and SD opened up. Not quite as consistent as we were earlier, but with that, now I'm going to remove the magneto speed and we'll shoot a couple of groups and get re-zeroed before we push back out to steel. Now that we have a velocity suppressed, I've removed the magneto speed. From here, I've got a paper down there with five dots on it. What I want to do is send a handful of rounds to show you the point of impact shift with the suppressor and what I do to correct that. So for this first string of rounds, I'm going to fire at the center dot in the paper. So I'm going to hold dead on. I'm back to zero on my turret. So I currently have my unsuppressed zero dialed on the rifle. Okay, the three went into a decent little group. And I'm measuring that. 0.5 low and 0.1 left. So I'm going to come up 0.5. I'm going to come right. One. Now I'm going to fire three rounds at the lower left dot. All right, so those are doing pretty decent. Let's throw five rounds into a group. I'm going to put a five round group in the upper left dot. All right, quite the respectable group. Looks like it's trending maybe a tenth low. So I'm going to come up a tenth. And I'm going to go back to the left, that tenth that I put in it. So that brings me back to zero on the windage. And I had to raise my point of aim six tenths when I put the suppressor on. Let's take a close up look. I'll zero out my turrets and then we'll shoot steel. So unsuppressed, the 10 inch plate out there at 517 called for 3.5 mils. With that, I've installed the suppressor and dialed up to 3.5, so exact same dope. Now let's send a handful of rounds and see if we can connect. We're a bit later in the evening, so it's really calmed down. I'm just going to hold dead on. So I think it's pretty safe to say 3.5 mils is good with the suppressor as well. So here we go, 820 yards suppressed on the two-thirds ipsic that's down there. So remember when we shot unsuppressed, my elevation was 7.6 mils, so I'm going to dial that on. And very little left to right wind. I'm going to favor just left edge of target. Too much wind. Impact. So basically no wind. I'm going to go on the plate. Okay. Okay. 
pack. Impact. So, I think it's pretty clear. I'm not going to send any more at 820. Pretty clear that that same elevation of 7.6 is exactly what we need, suppressed and unsuppressed, after I re-zero. From here, let's push back out to that full-size Zipsic at 1100. Let's move out to that full-size Zipsic, suppressed at 1100 yards. Now, earlier, unsuppressed, I needed 13.5 mils of elevation to connect, so I'll go ahead and dial that same elevation on. And man, it is just super calm out right now, so I'm just going to favor left edge of plate with the first round, and we'll see if we can connect. Got a beautiful sunset. Getting a little bit dark in the scope, but should be able to see. Here we go. First round. I'm going to favor left edge. Look like that actually landed just a bit to the left. So let me hold that on the plate. Just off the left edge. So both pushing to the left. I'm going to favor a half to the right. Impact. over the head. Well, I can't see the impact on the plate. You'll have to let me know in the comments what you're seeing. When did it look good? All right, so that is going just a little bit high. Let's come down two tenths. Favor that same half. Impact. Impact. That's all she wrote. So we made quite a few impacts out there. I guess I actually lost count, but. It seems like we're actually at, call it, 13.3. So that slight velocity increase with the can has changed our impact by two-tenths, so almost nothing. Now, let's review the results. So that concludes the shooting portion of our video. From here, let's take a couple of minutes and talk about what we saw for shooting performance out of this rifle, suppressed versus unsuppressed. Now, while I'm talking about my experience, I'd love to know in the comments, what did you see? Was the performance of this rifle in line with what you would have expected? Or was there anything that stuck out as being different than you would have thought happened when you install a suppressor on a long range precision rifle? So let me know. Now what I saw at 100 yards, first up, we removed the can and fired five rounds across the chronograph, got an average speed of 25, 75 feet per second, very normal for a 20 inch barrel with an SD of two, which is awesome. Then shot a five round group, and it measured roughly 1.25 inches overall. So respectable accuracy and plenty fine for what we're doing. Four rounds were all touching with one that popped just a little bit up and left. I then took that velocity information, plugged it into my shooter app, and got my drop for our first target, which was a 10 inch plate, 517 yards. Now in the video you saw, we ended up making multiple hits on that plate, 517, with 3.5 mils of elevation, pending windage. Feeling good, I pushed out to a two-thirds Ipsic at 820 yards, where again we connected with multiple impacts at 7.6 mils. From there, I was feeling really good, so we pushed out to a full-size Ipsic at 1100 yards. And as you saw in the video, we actually connected five times, which is really cool given per my app, 1100 yards is right where that bullet was starting to go transonic and subsonic, and in theory, losing some stability. So five impacts out there is awesome performance. We were at 13.5 mils. Really happy with the performance of this rifle, unsuppressed.
I then moved back down to 100 yards where I installed the can. And we got five rounds on the chronograph at just over 2580 feet per second. SD grew from about two up to nine. So while it's not a huge change in velocity, there were a couple of noted differences when installing the can. Velocity increased just a little bit and velocity consistency went down as resulted in that higher SD number. Still fine for what we're doing. The key takeaway here is the slight velocity increase. I then removed the magneto speed and we shot groups. First up, we noted the point of impact shift of installing the can. My bullets were landing about 0.6 mils low. Point of impact shift is very normal, happens with every can, should be repeatable. So if you're shooting suppressed and unsuppressed, you need to know what that difference is for your rifle. I dialed up 0.6 mils to get our setup re-zeroed at 100 yards, and we confirmed that with a five round group that landed about 0.75 MOA. So a beautiful group, a slight increase in accuracy over the unsuppressed, maybe that was me, don't know, but it was there and captured on video, so slight accuracy increase. And then we again pushed out and shot those same steel targets. So the 10 inch blade at 517 yards, dialed up 3.5 mils, connected with every round. So drop was the exact same, 517 yards. Then the two-thirds Zipsic out there at 820, dialed up 7.6 mils and connected multiple times. Very happy with that performance. Then we moved out to 1,100 yards and that's where we saw a slight difference in performance. At 1,100 yards suppressed, I was 13.3 mils versus 13.5 unsuppressed. So two-tenths isn't a huge difference, but it is a noted difference. And it has me wondering, the slight velocity increase we see at 100 yards with the can result in less drop out there at 1100. You think about 0.2 mils at 1100 yards, that's about eight to nine inches, so nothing huge. But again, it was noted and measured after installing the can. So in summary, my opinion, aside from the point of impact shift at 100 yards, once you correct that, the actual drop of the bullet is essentially the exact same for a suppressed rifle versus an unsuppressed rifle. That's exactly what I set out to test in this video. I hope that's the takeaway you got because in my opinion, when you add a suppressor, after you re-zero it, your performance expectation should be the exact same suppressed versus unsuppressed. So with that, let's close this video out. First things first, I've been wearing a really cool, new and exciting hat in this video. I'd love to hear your thoughts about it. I've been toying with the idea of maybe selling these to help support the channel. Let me know, what do you think about this hat? It's got a really cool new logo designed by Nutshell Design on Instagram. Really happy with how these turned out. Finally, I'm really trying to grow this channel and how we do that is your interaction. If you like this kind of content, please like my video, comment, let me know your thoughts. And finally, if you wanna see more content like this, subscribe so you're next in line to see that next video drop. Last, don't forget to check me out on Instagram at Mountain Smollett's America. From here, I hope you'll join me in my next video. I've got a ton of really cool things in the works, so stick around. Thank you.